first job in comic books, you've posted, I want to say, photographs of 350 or so rejection letters. <laughs> yeah. When did you first start sending those out? And did you get any particularly helpful feedback that allowed you to modify things so that you were able to get that first job? So let's go through it real quick. Did I get over 300 rejections? Yes. Is that tenacious? Is that determination? Or is that delusion? <laughs> at what point do you say, I'm going to be an opera singer, and people keep giving you no's, and you go, man, look at how determined is. At what point do you say, maybe I just can't sing opera, right? Right. So there's a fine line. People give me way too much credit for those 300. I think a normal sane person with sort of less enthusiasm, we'll leave it at that word, than me would have probably at 200 rejections found another option to make money. But the reason I was able to assimilate that many rejections was because I was going to college. So I was sending off samples almost continuously while I was in, in school. So it's like I didn't have a job. I was going to school. So I didn't care. I had four years to basically try and get a job. And then it, probably at the end of those four years, I was going to look at that pile and say, maybe I need to find something else. My degree is, I thought, is in graphic designing and I thought I was going to be the guy who's going to do Michelin tire ads, right? I go, that's okay. It's an admirable job, but, you know, it's a graphic designer. That was sort of where I thought the reality of it was going to be. So, but three weeks before I graduate, I get my first job. And how did I get it? By sending literally 700 samples over the course of those four years. And just on one level, I think I just wore them out because I sent it to every editor at every company. And so they, they, they used to have, let's say at Marvel, because my first job was at Marvel, they have like one submission editor. No, 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 no. The people who give you the work are the editors and they have 16 editors. So I would send it to all 16 editors. Ultimately, I went around the submission guy. I just went, what? You're not, you're not, you got to give it to the editors anyways. Might as well send it directly to the editors. So I would keep sending it to the editors over and over and over to every company, every editor. And I think Tim, in hindsight, I think that they probably had a board meeting or whatever, one of those Monday morning meetings, and they just said something like, and I'm making this up, but said, oh, for the love of God, that Todd kid, that, that, that punk that keeps sending us, we keep getting like a box of mail from this guy every two weeks. Would somebody in this room give him a couple pages just so we don't have to open up his mail every two <laughs> weeks? I think I just, I think I just wore him out. <laughs> and, and I got the job literally three weeks before I graduated. So I never even had to use my degree. Now, what informed me in those, it was all constructive criticism. Let me tell you, because people say, oh, Todd, you got the last laugh. No, no, no. Everything they put in those letters was constructive criticism because the people who just thought that I was, you know, not very good threw my, my portfolio and my samples in the garbage. So everybody who took the time to write back actually gave a little bit of sort of insight. And so what I would do, they didn't know it was actually going to keep me fueled, is that I would take that insight and then redo another batch and send it to everybody again. So I, you know, where I was making 20 mistakes, eventually got down to 18 and then 16 and then 15. And I think probably when I was at six mistakes, I think they finally said, hey, He's getting better. He's not perfect, but, and he seems to be enthusiastic. So somebody give him, give him a chance, see what he can do. 